Last week, I shared with you about the number one way to well-being, which as you might remember was Connect. Um, and the part of this program, which is the five ways to well-being, um, which was developed by the Royal Melbourne Hospital, um, it's the five ways. So there's four other ways to well-being. And I think together, when we learn about all of them, it gives us some really great tools. Again, I'd like to acknowledge Kathy Stewart from Carers SA, who shared this wonderful information and really inspired me um, to share this with you at um, a well-being workshop I attended a few weeks ago. So let's get stuck into it. So the number one way to well-being we know now is connect. Number two is to be active. So that will probably not come as a surprise to you. That being active, whether it's formal exercise or just being more active and moving is wonderful for us. Not just for our physical bodies, but it has all sorts of um, benefits for our mind. It elicits those you know, happy hormones. Um, so many benefits that it has having that um, ability to be active and keep moving. Um, and the best thing is to find something that you love doing. Firstly, because you'll enjoy it, but also because you'll probably do it more regularly. So you don't want to give yourself a, um, you know, a hard time about um, activity, but being active is important to maintain. So find something that you enjoy doing. And what I think is really wonderful is when we can combine these ways to well-being. So sometimes connecting and being active, when we can do them together, whether it's walking with a friend or family member or being part of a group um, that you are active together, this just almost compounds the benefits of these things. So we've got connect as number one, being active as number two. Number three is to keep learning. And I found that one very interesting because I, um, I guess as children, um, we really, you know, education and learning is made a really high priority. And then as we get older, other priorities tend to, tend to set in and there's not so much time or focus on learning. But research is showing just how important it is for our well-being to keep learning. It helps, um, uh, obviously, our, our thinking. It helps us to really open our minds about uh, awareness about ourselves and the rest of the world, which is a very, very beneficial thing. Um, and it's a, a wonderful thing to do. You find things that it might not, again, be a formal um, way of learning. It might be listening to podcasts reading, it might be le um, learning you know, new recipes. It could be quite simple things, but just keep prioritizing the, the, the brain function because it has a, a really beneficial effect on your well-being. So we've got connect, we've got um, be active, and we've got keep learning. And the fourth one, they call it being aware. And so this is about mindfulness. So um, being aware or mindfulness is about being able to be in the present moment because this has a profound effect on our ability to deal with stress. So I'm going to um, just refer to my notes because I don't want to miss out on anything that I want to share with you. And so one of the ways that we can think about mindfulness or being aware is stopping to smell the roses. And it's, I think it's a great, great to be reminded about these really simple things. So it, um, it allows us to keep calm. It allows us to think more clearly. When we're stressed, when we've got too much happening constantly in the mind, um, it does um, decrease our mood sometimes and our inability to think clearly. And it helps us to then be able to deal and respond with difficult situations when they come up. So there's lots of different ways that we can practice mindfulness and you'll have different ways and I'd love to hear about them um, that work for you. But it could be simply um, when we're eating, for example, taking the time to really notice the, the flavor, to savor the flavor of our foods. It could be when you were going for a walk to notice the sights, the smells, the sounds. Um, I guess it's a little bit about slowing down and noticing. So this being aware or mindful is about so that we, we notice what's happening in the moment. Maybe when you're having your cup of tea or coffee, noticing it, how it feels in your mouth, how it makes you feel as you enjoy it. 
Um, another wonderful mindfulness practice is um, reflecting on things that you have to be grateful for. This is a wonderful thing that not only puts us in the present moment, but puts us in a very, very positive, healthy state in our minds for our well-being. Really reflecting on daily can be a wonderful thing um, of what you have to, to be grateful for in your life. And some people have really practical things like craft or art that um, is a mindfulness practice. You know, even doing the dishes, <laughs> you can be mindful um, because you can really apply it into your life. And of course, we have our practices, our mindfulness practices of yoga, meditation, tai chi, qigong, a lot of these beautiful traditional practices um, really are mindfulness practices because these traditional cultures recognized a long time ago how important it is for our well-being to really take the time to be present in the body. So the last one is help others. So we have connect, be active, keep learning, be aware and help others. And this is a really interesting one because I think we all had that experience where when we help others, it um, benefits us almost more than perhaps the person that we're helping. Um, and it really, research is going into showing how benefit, benefit, beneficial it is for our health to help others, that it can help lower the blood pressure, um, it lowers, helps lower stress levels. And you know, the chain reaction that happens when we um, have these, you know, sometimes they're called acts of kindness or just really practically um, giving someone a helping hand, the effects that that has, no matter how small, uh, can be quite profound and it makes us really be a part of making the world a better place, which is just such an empowering thing to know that we're a part of um, being a part of that, that positive change. So, you know, it could be a really, really small thing. Sometimes it's just a smile to someone who you know needs it, a kind word, or something more practical. Um, but when we do these things, these kind gestures, helping others, um, it really, really can benefit us as well as the other people. And of course, we wanna keep in mind that we wanna keep the balance between helping others and our own self-care because at different periods of our life, we're gonna have different levels of energy. So if we keep re reminding ourselves of this cup that we wanna keep filled up, because we know when it's filled up that we have more that we can offer others. So just keep being aware, and that's that mindfulness of noticing how you feel, how your energy is, and what can you do to top up your, to fill up your cup, so that you can then help others. But just a, a, a general recap of those five ways to well-being: to connect with ourselves and others, to be active in a way that you enjoy and that you'll do regularly, to keep learning. It could be informal in any way. Just keep your brain working, <laughs> keep inspired. Number four is mindfulness being in the present moment, taking time to smell the roses. And number five is helping others. So thank you so much for um, tuning in, whether it's live or later on. I would love to know your experiences in the comments below, whether any of those particularly resonate with you, whether they have helped you in your, or continue to help you in your well-being. Um, whether you have some other things that you'd like to share um, with, with our community that really help you and how you practice mindfulness. So thank you so much for the opportunity to share this information with you. Please let me know, um, you know in any comments, uh, any thoughts you have. Hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are and um, I'm sure we'll be in touch soon. Thanks so much. Bye.